All right, so I've spent the last couple of weeks with my LG C3 in a factory mode, which is the mode the display goes into after you've accessed the hidden service menu. And what I wanna do in this video is talk to you about some of the good things about having done that, some of the bad things that came with that, but to kind of summarize whether I think it's worth it to do this or not. To open this video, I'm gonna show you what happens every single time you turn on your LG display after you've ventured your way into the secret hidden service menu. So I'm gonna take the remote here, let's go ahead and hit power, and you get a factory mode banner just floating across the screen, just having a good time. It's right there in your face, and uh, yeah, enjoy. All right, so first thing, let me talk to you about my process for how to get out of that factory mode banner going across the screen. So if you are somebody who's interested in doing this process to take advantage of the benefits, which I'm going to talk about here in a moment, let me tell you about what your day is going to look like every time you do this. So as you saw in that intro clip, you're going to get that factory mode banner going across the screen after you turn the display on. Let me tell you the steps of how I get around that. So whenever that pops up, what I do is I take the service remote, this right here, and I press the menu button. And the TV is going to pop up a message saying, wait 30 seconds uh, for the home screen to load. So at that point, after it's been about 30 seconds, you're going to take your LG remote here. You're going to press the home button on it. And once you do that, it's going to take you to the normal home screen where you have like all the apps that are built in on the TV and stuff. And then at that point, you can go ahead and press the input button and go back to the input you were on. The positive side to that is that even though you have to jump through more hoops, whatever input you go back to, your settings are going to still be saved there. So uh, just something to consider that the way the way I figured to get around that is to press the menu button. And that's sure as hell a lot better than what happened before, which was pressing in stop and factory resetting the entire TV. So now that that's out of the way and you kind of get a picture for every time you turn on your display, those are the sort of steps you're going to have to go through to get to back to your main screen, whatever it is you're going to be doing. Let me talk about some of the benefits to start with. So like I mentioned, I've been in the factory mode setting or whatever this is for the past couple of weeks now, and I've been living with this on a daily basis, meaning I've used this display every day pretty much since then. And here's the biggest benefit that I've noticed so far, and really for me, for my usage of the display, this is the only one that matters. And that's in the last couple of weeks of being in the factory mode, either the display has completely eliminated dimming altogether, or it's so minuscule that I can't even see it. It's not even discernible. And I have tested this on many different formats that normally would definitely draw out the dimming. For example, I tend to pick up a lot of dimming when I'm in my video editing software application. Um, I spend a lot of time on a screen that overall is static, but I'm moving the mouse all over the screen. I'm you know, clipping video, I'm moving stuff around, yet the display continues to dim down over time. And the only way to get around that is either to minimize the window or maybe even open up a new window that has a different set of lighting going on in the background. And it's extremely distracting. So truth be told, that's my that was my entire motivation for going into the service menu in the first place is to try to eliminate that major distraction that comes with that sort of dimming. The next example would be you know, those of you that watch my videos or follow my channel have actually seen me demonstrate this in real time. But I was recording an outro for a software update video and I had the LG web page pulled up. As I sit here and notice that my C3 has dimmed way down from the start. As a matter of fact, let me move the mouse real quick. Let me click. It's still not brightening back up yet. This is interesting to me. There it goes, it just brightened back up. And this is exactly why I wanna get into the service menu and turn this off. And by the time I got to that point of noticing the dimming, I moved my mouse around and then I had to click and you could literally in the video see the light just come back and hit my face. It was like, oh, you know. And that's really distracting and really annoying. And the third element would be in gaming. So I have a PlayStation 5 connected in here and 
on certain game menus if you sit on there for any amount of time at all there's enough either static elements on the screen or the lighting remains the same to this to a point where it triggers dimming and i can tell you this is a big difference between what's going on and how it performs with my game room c2 that it's very distracting and very noticeable to me so i have tested this on all three of those formats i just talked about and I can tell you the entire time that the TV has been in this factory mode, I have not once, at least for my eyes, noticed any discernible dimming at all, which is exactly what I was trying to accomplish by going into the service menu. Now, the, for those of you that haven't watched my prior videos, I'll just go ahead and give you some answers right now as to say, when I actually ventured my way into the service menu, I discovered that the two settings that I was actually going there to turn off were already turned off, which perplexed me because I still exhibit strong dimming depending on some of those things I just mentioned. So I still had a reason to go in there, but I was really surprised to see that LG had already turned those things off, which means there's a third dimming element that needs to be addressed, which I actually went in there and took a look at. And... Let me tell you a little bit about that real quick. So there is a third section in there. I may post a screenshot of this or, or something just to give you a visual. But uh, when you're in the service menu, the actual, the hidden, the part they lock down, there is the number four section. It's called system one. And if you go into system one, there's going to be a section that literally says dimming and there's an on off switch to it. And LG has this dimming switch turned on still. So I thought, well, maybe I figured that out. But here's the catch to that. So for the first time that I found that setting, I turned it off. I went through my whole session of video editing, web browsing, etc. I didn't notice any dimming at all. I thought I had figured it out. I was all set to make a video and show you guys like, hey, if you have a C3 or a G3 or even a C2 or a G2 that you've already updated to the latest web OS and now it has that lockdown service menu, here's what you need to do to get around that. What I thought I knew, I really didn't, because every time you go in that into the service menu and you turn that off for that session, you're good to go. However, when you turn the display off and then you turn the display back on, LG's algorithm turns that switch right back on, which means to turn off that third dimming part, you have to go into the service menu every single time and manually turn it off. To get back into that service mode, it's literally a one button press on the service remote. You just hit in start and you don't even have to, to enter a code at that point. So you go right back to it. However, two things here that I want to mention. Number one is that every single time you turn on the display, you're going to have to go in and manually turn that off. Number two, what I kind of discovered was that even with that dimming switch turned on, I'm still not seeing any dimming at all. And that was really interesting to me. So from my vantage point, as far as the last couple of weeks of daily usage in this factory mode, I don't think it would be necessary to go in and even turn off that dimming switch, which means you don't even really need to venture into the service menu because A, LG has already turned off TPC and GSR, and B, the dimming switch from what I can tell, really didn't change anything in the performance of the dimming part of the, the display. So to kind of summarize the, the major benefit here to going into the hidden service menu, meaning you have to go into factory mode, is that it appears to me that when the display is in factory mode, all dimming is, is disabled. And some of you out there that have more scientific type of measuring tools might refute that a little bit, but just from these two old eyes right here, it doesn't look like there's dimming going on. And trust me, before I went into the hidden service menu, I could see dimming all over the place, even with stuff like adjust logo brightness turned off. So for me, the dimming has been completely disabled by being in factory mode. But even though I achieved the goal I was looking to do, the extra hoops that I have to jump through every single time I turn on the display, in my opinion, doesn't make it worth it. And if you're somebody who is going to just turn on your display once per day and just have it on for your entire session and then that's it for the day, whether that be all day or, you know, 30 minutes, whatever, this might be worth it to you because, as I mentioned in the intro, the steps to get around that factory mode banner aren't really too bad and you're looking at 30 seconds to a minute of your time to do so. 
But if you're somebody who is going to turn on the display, get some work done for an hour or two, and you turn it off, and then you come back an hour or two later, if you're going to be doing this multiple times a day, I can't possibly see how this would be worth it. I'm at the point now where I'm ready to go ahead and in-start factory reset this TV back to how it was when I unboxed and set it up for the first time and actually just deal with whatever dimming that comes along with it. And that makes me kind of sad to say because the dimming part of OLED displays was what was my biggest hesitation to move to the technology in the first place. And yes, I knew by making my desktop monitor, which this that's what this C3 is for, I knew that that was going to be a major factor in that. I knew that the dimming was going to be a part of it, but I also anticipated having a way to maybe get around it. And I am here to say that there are ways to limit how much the dimming can distract you on those formats that I talked about before, but you really have to get in and lower a lot of the brightness settings to that tipping point of where the dimming algorithm is going to go ahead and kick in and start bringing the panel down. So for example, you need to have pixel brightness at a certain point. You need to have the contrast set at a certain point. You have to set it at that max limit where the display can get so bright. Unlike that LG web page with the software updates, that's really bright white behind the script. You have to set certain settings to a certain point to where the display is like, okay, that brightness level is fine. I don't need to interfere. So you have to take that into consideration. And for what I use my displays for, I don't necessarily want to be limited by how bright I can make it for stuff like that, which is why I even want to go into the service menu in the first place. And I know I kind of skipped over going to the bad parts section here, but I've talked about them in my good parts section, right? Like, the extra hoops you have to jump through every time you turn on a display to get rid of that banner. If there was a way to get rid of that banner when you first start to display with maybe one button click, you know, that's not so bad. But the fact that you have to hit a button, let it wait, you know, wait like 30 seconds, then you got to hit another button on another remote, then you got to go back to the input you were on. That's too many steps, in my opinion, for the benefit of eliminating dimming altogether. So having said that, the time has come. The very next thing I'm going to do when I'm done with this video, because I'm still in factory mode right now as I'm recording this, this is why the lighting on my face hasn't changed the whole time, because the panel is staying the exact same luminance as it was from the start, which I love, and I'm sad to see that go away, but the next step from here is I'm going to go ahead and end stop factory reset and just go back to the way it was and um, just live with it how it is. At the time of filming this video, the 2024 lineup of LG TVs uh, are becoming available where you can go and purchase them now, not just pre-order. So there's a part of me that wants to take a look at a 42 inch C4 and do some comparisons to the C3 and see if, there, see if anything has improved when it comes to the dimming on a display. And if you're somebody who would be interested in seeing me compare the C3 and the C4 or to do these same sort of tests on the C4 and to see how it compares when it comes to the dimming, leave me a comment below. Let me know if you want to see that and uh, I'll see if I can get things worked out to get a 42 C4 and see how it compares. So that's going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy the content, please hit that like button. It really helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. And of course, if you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing to the channel and of course hitting that bell notification so you don't miss my future uploads. But with all that being said, until the next one.